Hey guys, it's Tiger Chainsaw, and I am once again back for another edition of Retro Game Collecting. I've been quite busy over the last few weeks. I went on a couple fun trips, but through it all, I never stopped collecting, and I have way too many games to show you that I've bought. Uh, some of them more special than others, but we'll get to that in a little bit. As you can see behind me, my video game collection is expanding. I was able to get another shelf in here and I need it because my collection is getting a little overwhelming right now. I actually don't even have enough room for my PlayStation 4 games. So it's exciting, it's a good problem to have, but how about I hop into the games I picked up over the last few weeks. Let's start it. I picked up brand new from Walmart for $10 for the Nintendo 3DS Animal Crossing New Leaf yeah, just called New Leaf. I thought it was New Leaf Town. Uh, I actually picked this up because a friend of mine on Twitter, Sega Blocks, uh, was talking about how he went to Walmart, found some really great deals. They're trying to get rid of all their 3DS games. And so I ended up going to five Walmarts around me. And uh, out of all of them, they only had one 3DS game. And that was Animal Crossing New Leaf. I bought that for my wife actually. I think she's gonna enjoy it a lot more than me. That was the only 3DS game that I picked up. I only picked up one Xbox One game, and you guys might get a little kick out of this, uh, but I picked up Mighty Number no. 9 for the Xbox One. So go ahead, make fun of me for it. I know it's like a really terrible game I hear. I haven't played it, but what's cool about this version is it did come with an art booklet right here. Uh, and that's just kinda, you know, that's cool. I like that. And eventually I'll play it and hopefully I get a laugh out of it. It was only $5. And that was the cheapest that I'd actually seen Mighty Number no. 9. Uh, so I thought to myself, hey, five bucks for a chuckle? Yeah, I've paid a lot worse for that. Let's see, moving on to the PS4. I picked up one game, and that is, <coughs> excuse me, that is Darksiders 3, which now completes my collection of Darksiders. Unfortunately, I have not played any of them yet, but I hear it's a great series, and uh, I think I really like the lore of it already. It, it sounds pretty cool, and I am excited to maybe play that series sometime soon. I have a huge backlog. Let's go to the PlayStation 1 games that I picked up. I picked up Nuclear Strike for the PS1, and this game I have actually never heard of until I saw it at a store. I believe it was $3, and I thought it, it must be pretty bad if it's that cheap. But I looked up some reviews for it, and it actually turns out that it's a fairly decent game. It was made by EA uh, way back in the 90s, I know. Um, so hopefully it's, it's high quality for a cheap price. My favorite game that I picked up for the PS1, I picked this up for $5, and I was really stoked to see it. I picked up a great copy of Tekken 2. And what's really exciting about this is that I just beat the first Tekken. Uh, if you recall, in one of my other retro game collecting videos, I got Tekken and it was in great condition. I moved that all the way up to my, um, my backlog. So I just beat Tekken and loved it. Loved me some Armor King. And Tekken 2 was actually a game from my childhood. My friend had it and I actually played a ton of hours into this as a kid. So I'm really looking forward to kind of not recreating my childhood, but exploring some memories of mine from that series. Those were all the games that I picked up for the PS1. Let's move on. I have so many games I'm going to show you guys. Let's move on to the PS3, okay? Uh, probably, you know, this actually might be a worse purchase than uh, Mighty Number no. 9. I picked up, and I totally didn't even know it, I picked up Mag for the PS3. 
Now, some of you might be like, well, why is that a bad purchase? Well, it's unplayable. Apparently, Mag was a massive online uh, multiplayer game. It's a shooter, and it looks like you can play up 256 people can play at once. Holy smokes. Um, but the thing is, the server's down now. It's gone. So this is essentially just plastic and a disc that I get to display. Although, you know, most of my games are because I never get to play all of them. So I'm a little bit bummed that I paid money for a useless game. Another game that I had been looking for for quite some time, oddly enough, and it was always at a price that I never was going to pay for. Found it for $3, and that is Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And I don't know if all the copies come like this, but I did pick up in the inside of it. It had Call of Duty Black Ops 3 uh, zombie multiplayers. Um, not exactly sure how that works, but I did like the first Black Ops. The second Black Ops I'm looking forward to, but I heard the third one does not have a single player mode, which is a big turnoff to me. I don't play those games for the online battles. I try and stay away or stay offline as much as possible. Uh, so we'll see. I picked up a game called Legendary, and I'm pretty sure it's anything but. I've looked up a lot of reviews on this. I think I got it for $3, but it looks really cool, but I think the gameplay is not so much. But we'll see. We'll see if I like it. I like buying games where I can take a risk on them for just $3. So here's another game I found at Goodwill. And this is a universe that I don't really, I don't want to say I, I don't care for it, but I'm just not into it. And that's the Transformers universe. Uh, but I did pick up Transformers Fall of Cybertron. And, you know... My extent of that universe is I had Beast Wars for the PS1, and I actually really liked that as a kid growing up. I liked that show, but Beast Wars was after Transformers, and I just wasn't around back then when Transformers was really big. And I never got into the movie franchise that is Transformers now. But um, this game, I actually hear some good things about, so hopefully I enjoy it. I also picked up Sacred 3 for the PS3. I believe, I know for a fact I have Sacred 2, haven't played it. I don't know if I have the first Sacred. I don't know if that is a PC exclusive. We'll see. Um, these are games that I feel like I could get really hooked on and, uh, you know, someday I'll get to it. I picked up Syndicate for the PS3. Um, this was on clearance at like a video game store for I think $5. And you know me, if I see a game that's under $5 and it's it's rated okay, I'm gonna pick it up. Um, I don't really know too much about it other than it's a first person shooter and it looks like you can have a four player co-op experience. Now, whether that is on the couch or online is to be seen. If it's on the couch, I'd love that. I, man, I really miss playing games on the couch with my friends. Okay, moving on, I picked up Twisted Metal for the PS3. Um, I have a couple Twisted Metal games, but this one looks awesome. Uh, this one really looks cool. I watched a video on it, but maybe it was like the intro video. It looked pretty dope. Uh, so I'm looking forward to playing this. And what do you guys think of Twisted Metal? Do you guys think it's time that they kind of revive the series? I don't think that they've had a game in the Twisted Metal universe in quite some time. My final game that I picked up for the PS3, and this is a game that I saw, I've never seen it in person before. I have no idea about this series, but it had anime girls on it and you know I'm just like oh that's probably a good game you know, I'll try that out and that is a uh, record of a Garrist War 2 
Why do some of these games have such terrible names? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, it's a JRPG. It's made by, what's that company that you always see? It's not Akis Games, which they did make that. Oh, Idea Factory. I always see that for some of these like weird games. I'm hoping it's good, but I'm not expecting it to be stellar. Those were my PS3 games that I picked up uh, this past week. Let's move on to my Wii games that I picked up. And I kind of really wanted to wait a few more days to make this video because I have a massive collection coming in this weekend. But I thought, hey, if I make this video, it's already gonna be probably over a half hour. And you guys don't even care that much about like my video game collection. So why would I expect you guys to stick around for an hour? I don't know, we'll see. But I do have a follow-up video coming somewhat shortly. For the Wii, I picked up Spore Hero. And I, you know, those games that were in the mid 2000s that you could create your own monsters or civilizations was really popular. And I think Spore Hero was one of them. I don't know too much about it. It looks a little goofy. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if that's something I enjoy. Here's another series that this now completes my collection for it. This was probably the most rare one of them, but that's not saying much. This is like $10. I picked up Raving Rabbits Travel in Time. And, you know, is this just a mix of party games? You know, those can be fun. You know, the Mario parties can have some, some fun and some laughs with your friends. This looks like that's what it is. It looks like another um, party game. We'll see. Boom shakalaka. And if you know that phrase, you know that I'm talking about NBA Jam. Picked it up for the Wii. Uh, this was a guy just randomly selling on Facebook. And I saw his listing. I was like, hey, there's two games I like in your collection. Can I snag those? And he said, yeah. Never played NBA Jam. That's a lie. I should say I never owned NBA Jam. I've only played NBA Jam growing up a couple times, and I believe, don't quote me, but I think it was for the sake of Genesis. Uh, my friend had that. We played it a few times. All I really remember is that the players had big heads and that you can catch fire, and my one friend is really obnoxious. He still is to this day, and he just yells out, boom shakalaka. That's where it comes from. My wife actually bought this game. Uh, she is currently playing Two Point Hospital for the Switch, and she saw Hysteria Hospital Emergency Ward, and it kind of looks similar gameplay. There might be some hospital management with some goofiness and some silliness. Seems to be right up her alley. So she picked that one up, but I thought, hey, I'll throw that into this gaming collection. All right, I picked up Monster Hunter 3, or Monster Hunter Tri, depending on how you say it. I have Monster Hunter World for the PS4, but I, uh, other than that, this is my second Monster Hunter game. I think I would love this series. I think I'd get really into this. Eventually, guys, I'll find time to play all of them. All right, the last game that I picked up for the Wii, and this was the second game that the guy on Facebook had, and that is The Sky Crawlers Innocent Aces. Uh, I like flight combat games, but I also like games that kind of tie in anime. And I actually discovered after I bought this that The Sky Crawlers was a movie in Japan. It's an anime movie, and they decided to make this game based off the movie. So, and it actually got some pretty good scores. All right, you've seen my PS3, my Wii, and my miscellaneous collection. Let's go to my Xbox 360 that I picked up. This isn't that exciting, but it does complete my collection, although the other two I have for the PS3. I picked up Bioshock for the Xbox 360. I already beat this game before. I have it as a digital download for the PS3. Really enjoyed it. I thought it's a great, great game. 
and it needed a physical copy of it. And I know that it used to only be on the Xbox 360, so I thought I'd give it a little bit of a nod and uh, pick it up. Pretty cheap. Another series that I have a ton of games for uh, is Halo, and I bought Halo Reach. Don't really know too much about this. I have no idea if like Master Chief's in this. Um, I've only beat the first two Halos. Don't really know too much about the series other than that. So maybe I'm in for a shock. Maybe he's not part of this. Who knows, guys? If you like the Halo series, let me know some of your thoughts on Halo Reach. I picked up Two Worlds for the Xbox 360. Uh, this looks like, you know, a game in the in the Dragon Age universe or in the Witcher universe. Um, I have Two Worlds 2, haven't played it, but, you know, this type of game interests me. And I'm trying to kind of figure out what type of gameplay it is. You know, maybe it's like an RPG. Uh, if you've played the Two World, maybe the first one specifically, if you've played that, let me know how it is. Um, I'm curious as to what it's like. Uh, I picked up, and this is kind of a funny cover, I picked up Conan for the Xbox 360. And if you kind of like take a good look at it, you see this is like classic 2000s video games. And I really miss this. But you see like the girls on the cover and they're just like way over the top. I like that stuff, it's pretty funny to me. Um, I watched some gameplay footage of Conan Man, it looks rough. It looks not good, uh, as far as graphics go. Maybe the gameplay is fun, but holy crap, this game looks a little rough around the edges. We'll see how much I like it. I picked up Quake Wars Enemy Territory. And growing up, Quake was really popular for land parties, or land parties. If you don't know what that is, Google LAN parties. This is what kids my age, elementary school and middle school used to do. They would literally pack their entire computer in a car and head to the high school computer lab where they would plug it in and then play games like Quake together online. Uh, it was wild time back then. I never did that stuff, but I do know the uh, series of Quake. And so I saw that, I was like, man, I haven't, I haven't seen a Quake game in forever. I don't even think the series is still going on. So I picked it up. Ha! Huh. This is a game that I know is bad, but I saw it and I was like, uh, I need it. I need it. I picked up Golden Axe Beast Rider and I have beat the first two, two games in Golden Axe for the Sega Genesis. Fun series. I, I really wish they pulled this off well. I haven't played it, but I know it's a bad game. I wonder what's bad about it, though. So I'll discover it for myself. Going along the axe-wielding magic kind of uh, universe, I picked up Dark Messiah, Might and Magic Elements. And I don't, you know, guys... Sometimes I just buy too many games and I just like, I get in that mode or that mood where I'm just like, I have too much money, I need to buy all these games, blah, 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 blah. In reality, I'm like, it's not the case. Uh, <laughs> I just, I see some games and I look them up and I'm like, oh, if it scored better than 60 on Metacritic, I have to have it. So I bought this game. I don't really know what it's about. Looks like it's about orcs. We'll see. This is actually a series that I like a lot. I beat the first four of them, and I have the beach volleyball versions of them, so maybe that'll spark what I'm about to say. But I picked up Dead or Alive 5 for the Xbox 360, and I really enjoy that series. Um, I have the first four of them, like I just mentioned, plus the first volleyball one. And uh, I like them. I think it's a fun series. We'll see uh, how the fifth one turns out. All right, I picked up Ninja Blade for the Xbox 360. 
I, so the cover of it reminds me of Metal Gear Rising. It looks like really over the top, hack and slash, that type of stuff. If it is, that'd be awesome. I like those games that are just like way over the top. They make you laugh. They don't take themselves serious. Those are the video games that I like. And Ninja Blade definitely looks like it's one of those games where you just go, like, what the fuck did I just play? Last game for the Xbox 360. Uh, this one's in, this, this case is in great condition. It's a RPG from Square Enix called Project Silphied Ace of Deception. And aside from the title, I know nothing about this game. It looks like it's a space RPG. Uh, obviously it was made by Square Enix. I tend to trust them to make quality games. So I think I'm gonna take a chance on it and hopefully it ends okay. Let's move to the Xbox games that I picked up. I told you guys, I pick up way too many games. This is just insane. And I have way too many coming this weekend. I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, I did pick up Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings for the Xbox. And I have a couple Xbox games dedicated to Lord of the Rings. I believe, let's take a look, they're right around here. I've got Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, and Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. So now I have Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. I also love that movie. And to complete my Lord of the Rings collection for the Xbox, I picked up Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Um, I really dig this universe. Um, to be frank, the only Lord of the Ring games that I've ever played was Lord of the Rings Trilogy Lego. And I loved it. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really well done. Played every one of them with my wife throughout, you know, every game we beat together. It was a lot of fun. So if, let's see, is it co-op? No, it's just one player. Dang, that's kind of a bummer. All right, moving on. I picked up Dead Man's Hand for the Xbox. And, you know, I was mentioning uh, how over the top some games were back in the 2000s. I'm gonna try and show you this. Look at this, uh, look at this massive cleavage we got going on for this girl. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't know if, there we go. I think I just took it in. Man, the Wild West did not have bras back then. Well, they had bras, they had like push-up bras, clearly from this. Dead Man's Hand. Looks like it's a shooter. Looks like it's a bit ridiculous. Looks like I like it. All right, I picked up a Zurich. Rise of Patheria. I slaughtered that name. I'm not entirely sure how to say it. Uh, this is only on Xbox. It's an Xbox exclusive. Looks like you have a spear and you can do some magic. It looks like a adventure game with some like action elements. I could get behind this. I could dig that. Ooh, all right. This is a this is a series, I don't want to say it's a series, but, uh, well, I'll just show it to you. It's Area 51 for the Xbox, and in another one of my retro game collecting videos, I bought another game, I think it was like Black Sight, and it's like Area 51. Whenever I think of Area 51 video games, I always think of the movie theater that my dad would take me to every Friday. It was like a tradition. We would go, he'd buy me a PS1 game, He'd buy me Pokemon cards, and then we'd go to Pizza Hut, where we'd get stuffed crust pizza and Mountain Dew, and then we would go to the movies. Man, what a childhood I had. I would kill for one weekend like that with my dad again. I miss him so much. He's not dead, don't worry. I just miss him a lot. <laughs> we live in different states now. Anyway, Area 51, uh, hoping that it's like as fun as the arcade game, but it looks a lot different from it. All right. I picked up Gunmetal for the Xbox, and this was the first time that I had seen this game in person. It looks like it's a mech game. It also kind of looks like it's a transformer game. So you transform from mechs to like uh, jets or tanks. Um, 
yeah, you know, this is another game. If you know anything about it, let me know in the comments. I'd love to kind of like see your point of view of some of these games that I got. All right, another Xbox exclusive. I picked up Nightcaster, Defeat the Darkness. And man, there's like, there's a lot of Xbox games that I didn't know existed that I'm really happy that I'm starting to get. Um, the Xbox, I really associate that with my mom and my stepdad. He bought me the Xbox when it first came out. That's kind of how he won me over. And there's all these great games on that system that I kind of missed out on, but I'm happy to, uh, to play them now. I picked up Pariah. Is this how you say this game? Uh, let's see. Can you survive? Earth, 2520 AD. You are Jack Mason. And by the way, every single character from the 2000s was either named Jack, John, or like some, some name like that. Ugh. An outcast doctor with nothing left to lose. When your transport ship is shot down during a routine prisoner transfer, you and your infected patient find yourself stranded deep within the most vicious prison sectors of a wasteland called Earth. All right, could be fun. We'll see. Here is a game that I think it has a couple sequels. Haven't played any of them. Haven't played this game, but I picked up Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. And I'm pretty sure this was a Xbox Gold member game um, that you could get a couple months ago. But I saw it in physical form. I'm pretty sure it's a good game uh and so i was like yeah five bucks i'll get the physical copy you guys ready for some mystery uh when i okay so you're probably wondering where i get all these games um i picked up a ton of these games at three retro gaming stores that i've never been to and that's kind of my mo is i'll travel around and i seek out these retro game places and I get too overwhelmed by all these games that I've never seen before in person. And I'm just like, I have to have it, have to have it, have to buy it, have to get it. And uh, it takes a wallop to my wallet, but uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully I get to play these sometime. But the cashier was going through scanning some of these games and he saw this one. He's like, oh, have you ever played it? This is like, they did some weird shit for this game back in the day, back when it was released. And that is uh, Siberia for the Xbox. Um, I don't exactly know what he meant by that. Um, I'm getting a call right now. I'm gonna go ahead and decline that. I'm not exactly sure who's calling me. Um, but hang on, let me just triple check and make sure it's not, okay. Yeah, all right, whoops. Yeah, so Siberia, it looks like it's like a mystery game. I don't know if he was referring to when like games break the fourth wall, like the Metal Gear Solid series does all the time. I love that. I wonder if Siberia breaks the fourth wall. I'll see. All right, this is a game produced by Sega for the Xbox. It's called Spartan Total Warrior. There's a ton of games like this that came out. I don't wanna say a ton, uh, but there was a lot of hype and excitement around ancient Greece. Um, so you have like Spartan Total Warrior, which is this game. You have Sword of Vengeance for the Xbox, which I, which I beat almost a year ago. Loved it. Great game. And then you have, you know, God of War is like still Greek, but you also have um, Gladiator, or Gladys. Gladys, I think it's called. Oh, spoiler, I got it, and I'll show it to you in a little bit. But those were games that uh, really sparked an interest and the Romans and gladiators and that type of stuff. The last game I bought for the Xbox, I picked up Armed and Dangerous. And this is by LucasArts. And I'm very interested to see this game. Um, the cover looks pretty awesome. I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but I know LucasArts had some great games come out in the early 2000s and 90s. And I'm hoping that Armed and Dangerous is one of them. All right, guys, I have so I have more games, obviously, 
Let me go to the PSP, all right? Absolutely love the PSP. Here are some games that I picked up for it the last couple weeks. This game's really boring. Um, it was in like a collection of PSP games that I picked, so it was thrown in there, and I was like, well, I don't have it. Fine, I'll pick it up. It's Rainbow Six Vegas for the PSP. I think, well, I know I already have this for the Xbox 360. I have the first two ones. Now I have it on the PSP, whatever. I have the first one of this game. I hear it's great. And uh, I have now the second one, which is, I'm going to say this wrong, Lumens 2? We'll see. It's like a music Tetris type puzzle game. I know the first one scored really well. I think the second one scored very well too, but I uh, just haven't gotten around to playing the first one. So we'll see. Going off of sequels, I picked up Loco Roco 2. I beat Loco Roco a year ago, really liked it. I thought it was very fun, very catchy music. I thought the controls were great. Uh, so I picked up Loco Roco 2 and I hope it's similar to the first game because I really enjoyed that. Picked this up, this is actually a prequel and that's Dead to Rights Reckoning. And I have, I think the first two games in the series, I, this is technically the third one, but it's a prequel. So we'll see, um, we'll see. This is probably the point where you're like, Tiger Chainsaw, you buy too many games. Like, why would you buy this game? You're stupid. And that is, cause this is a Japanese PSP game, no English, but I'm like, I think I could play it. It's like a dance rhythm game. We'll see guys. And it's got an anime girl on it. Project Diva 2. Have you guys ever heard of this game before? Have you ever heard of this series before? Like I said, it looks like it's a dance rhythm game, so I think I can get by without knowing Japanese. But I think that was the point where I'm like, I think I just buy games to buy games. Like, what's wrong with me? What's a game like that in your guys' collection? What's a game that you're like, yeah, I bought it. Don't really know why I bought it. I don't know if I'll ever play it, but uh, eh, I just bought it anyway. That's probably Project Diva 2. I got Crazy Taxi Fair Wars. And Crazy Taxi, I have the first one for the PS2. I remember playing it in the arcades as a kid. Thought it was so awesome. And this was actually my first ever eBay purchase. I got it when I was in sixth grade. I think I used some money that I got from, from my birthday and I told my dad, I'm like, dad, I really want Crazy Taxi. Can you buy it for me on eBay? He did using my money and it took like eight weeks to get to me. So frustrating. And then I played it on my PS2 and I was so disappointed. I was disappointed because I don't think there's like a free roam option. Like I just wanted to drive through the city. I don't want to be timed. I don't want to pick up customers all the time. But Crazy Taxi, the original one, didn't have that option. I remember being a kid and I was like, dang it. Uh. All right. I also picked up Bounty Hounds for the PSP. Um, let's see here. This old woman on Facebook got rid of it for five bucks. I was like, yeah, I will take that lady. So looks like you're a bounty hunter. It's made by uh, Bandai Namco. Looks futuristic. It looks fun. We'll see. All right. I picked up Warhammer 4 40,000 Squad Commander. Got a lot of Warhammer games. Never played any of them. Uh, but someday, guys. Someday. We'll see. Another game that this woman was just getting rid of for $5. I picked up Tekken Dark Resurrection. And I believe this is like technically Tekken 5. And I almost picked it up for $20 at this used video game store, but I didn't. I stopped myself. I was like, no, stop doing this. You can get it another time. And you already have Tekken 5 for the PS2. Stop doing this. Well, it's good news that I didn't because I picked this up for $5. Not bad. All right. Moving to the final two games that I picked up for the PS2. 
picked up God of War, Chains of Olympus. Big fan of the God of War collection, or the series and as a whole. Um, never got them on the PSP. I've beaten every God of War that's not on the PSP. So I'm really looking forward to hopping in and playing this. And guess what, guys? I picked up God of War, Ghost of Sparta. And, oh, all right, I'll let you guys in on a secret. It only had the disc, no case, and today this actually just came. I bought a case online, but it's a repo case. Um, I couldn't find any, re uh, any original cases from eBay or Amazon, so I, I got a repo case. But what do you guys think? You think it looks okay? Hopefully. I think it looks good. I don't think you can really tell. That ends my PSP games that I got. All right. And if you guys are still with me, thank you so much for like watching all this. This is great. Um, I have some PS2 games I'll go through. And then I have one very, very, very special game to me that I will be showing you guys at the end. All right. So at Goodwill, I picked up the original Guitar Hero. And it's weird to say, but it's actually kind of valuable now. Uh, it's it's like worth $30, which is kind of a lot for a PS2 game. Uh, I saw Guitar Hero 1 and 2 in Goodwill. And I opened this up, and it was empty. And I was like, gosh darn it. But I was like, well, if Guitar Hero's here, Guitar Hero 2 is also here. I bet you it's from the same person that donated them. So sure enough, I looked in Guitar Hero 2, and the, the disc for Guitar Hero was in it. So I swapped it, put it in there, and got off with it. Lethal Skies, Elite Pilot. Um, I beat Heat Seeker for the Wii a couple weeks ago, and it was okay. It was, that's just how I can describe it. It was okay. So Lethal Skies, I'm pretty sure is a game very similar to that, where there might be a few minutes of fun. We'll find out. I used to love the PS1 version of this, and I saw this for like $2, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get this. I got Sledstorm for the PS2, and I really dug the original Sledstorm, and I'm pretty sure the original Sledstorm had Rob Zombie on the soundtrack, which is like how I discovered him. I'm sure my dad was thrilled about that. Uh, but yeah, I really dug the soundtrack to that. I hope they stick with a really cool soundtrack. I picked up a few weeks ago the first SSX. Now I have SSX3 for the PS2. Uh, it looks like I'm just missing the second one. And I tweeted about that series not too long ago, and it seems like a lot of people really want to bring it back. Um, we'll see if EA does that. You know, EA, ugh, they have such a record for getting great games, getting great series, and then they like closet them or they just ruin them. It's kind of a bummer, guys. All right, I have Burnout 1, I have Burnout 2, and now I have Burnout 3 Takedown. I really dig this series. I, this sounds bad. I love car accidents, I love car crashes. It's really fun to kind of play through that type of arcade stuff. Burnout, perfect series for that. Because I also picked up Burnout Revenge. And I think this is the fourth game in the series. I love the back of this. Forgiveness is for losers. And yeah, it's, it's all about revenge. So Burnout 3, Burnout Revenge. I'm looking forward to crashing my car safely. This now completes my series. I had Silent Scope and Silent Scope 3. Now I have Silent Scope 2 for the PS2. Uh, these, I bet, are really, really fun arcade games, but I've never really played them in the arcade. But uh, I'm hoping for the PS2, I'm hoping it's, it's okay. All right. Blowout for the PS2. This looks like your generic early 2000s shooter. Remember I just talked to you guys about like guys named Jason and, and John for early games in the 2000s? As a transferred marshal, John Kane, of course, um, this actually kind of kind of gives me a Contra vibe. I don't know, guys. Let me know if you've played it before. All right. Picked up Mega Man Anniversary Collection. And 
I don't have any of the Mega Mans for the Nintendo. I don't have a Nintendo Entertainment System. So I play them through emulation. Whoops, I know, I'm a bad person. But this actually gives me the ability to play the first six games, it looks like, uh, for the PS2. So I'm excited for that. Never seen this movie. I think this is a movie. Um, and the only Jet Li movie that I've watched is Unleashed, which I actually kind of like. But I got Jet Li, Rise to Honor, and let's see, it looks like it was published by Sony. So you got to think there's some power behind it. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the plot is. Maybe he deals with the Yakuza. I don't know. I'll find out in 10 years when I finally play it. I have a couple games in this series. I picked up Commandos 2 for the PS2. And you know, the more I talk, the more I'm like, I'm glad I'm doing this video now, and not when I have 50 more games that I'm getting this weekend. Uh, Commandos 2 looks like it's a real-time strategy game, I believe. Those are always kind of fun. We'll see. They have some interesting characters on the back. I'm just kind of looking at it right now. They have a dog named Whiskey. That's got to be cool. I have, I think most of these games in the series uh, but now I think I have the full collection and that's Tack to the Staff of Dreams. As I mentioned in one of my other videos it could be more of a kids game. I'm a little bit nervous because I see Nickelodeon on it and I'm like I don't know if I'm gonna like that. We'll see. I have the first one or the, the second one of this game now I have the first and that's Kessen for the PS2. I don't think that it's involved with the Dynasty Warriors series, it could be, but you know, Kessen, similar to Dynasty Warriors and Romance of the Three Kingdoms, it's all kind of in that universe. We'll see if I enjoy it. All right, this is a bad game. By all accounts, it's a bad game. But this is when I see a, a cover of a game and I'm like, I have to get that game. It's so ridiculous and it looks over the top. I picked up for like three bucks, so it's not no big deal. Hidden Invasion, okay? Check out the melons on this chick. Let me get you there. And it's just like, looking at the back of it, it looks like a fighting force kind of game. I have no idea. I actually want to play this fairly soon. It looks so bad, but it looks like one of those games that I'm like, low key, I kind of like it. It's really goofy and over the top. If you guys have played Hidden Invasion, Please, please, please let me know. All right? Thanks. This is a rare sequel. I don't, th I don't want to say it's rare. I've just never seen it in person. I have the first one, but I picked up Headhunter Redemption for the PS2. I have not played the first one. I know. Shame on me. But I've never seen the second one, and it was like five bucks. And I was like, yeah, I think Headhunter is a very solid series. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, hang on. Oh, all right. Oh, I gotta take a break soon. Um, all right, I'll do one more and then I gotta take a break, guys. I picked up for the PS2, never heard of this game until now. That's Stolen. What a strange game. It looks like, it looks like it's straight from like Mission Impossible where he's like going down on the lasers. It looks like this type of game. So I'm not entirely sure what this is about. Oh, here we go. This is perfect. This is such the theme of the video where I'm telling you about over the top, over sexualized girls from the 2000s. Check out the, the back of this. It goes, Anya Romanoff is a sexy, high tech thief for hire. When an everyday job turns sour, she finds herself drawn into a web of conspiracy that will shake the whole city to its foundations. I just love the fact that they're like, she's sexy. It's just like, all right guys, calm down. In the meantime, I gotta take a little quick break. Uh, I gotta move my car out of the garage real quick. So see you guys in a little bit. All right guys, I'm back. And as I was saying, the early era in the 2000s for the PS2 was pretty crazy with all of their, uh... <laughs> oh boy, here we go, here we go. I just looked at this game the first time in the back, and this is another perfect example. Uh, the game is Heroes of Might and Magic, Quest 
before or quest for the dragon bone staff okay the cover looks pretty awesome and the actual game looks pretty cool and uh let's see what does the lead female character look like for this game can you guys see that boobies all right this is, I believe, the third game in this series. I'm, I haven't played it, but it looks really cool, this series does. And this is Kaya Dark Lineage. And I'm pretty sure that this game ties into... Uh, let's see here. I know I got the game somewhere. I think it's like the Mark of Kai or Rise of the... Something like that. I'm not even going to pretend to know what it is off the top of my head. But I think this is uh, similar to that. And it's interesting. Like, I really dig the cover art on this with the floating islands. It just looks really cool. And let's see. Atari published it. That's interesting. I don't know. I don't know if I trust those guys over there. But we'll see. This game is a game that I used to see all the time in PS2 magazines or PlayStation magazines. Saw so many advertisements for this, and I always thought it looked very interesting, but it was never enough for me to ask my dad to buy it for me. And that is Fur Fighters. You see this? It looks really interesting with like the teddy bear getting all shot up and stuff. It looks, it's cell shaded, and I'm not entirely sure. It, Maybe it's kind of like the humor of Conquer, uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. It's kind of like the vibe I get from it, but I could totally be wrong. I haven't played it. All right, you guys remember when I was like talking about Gladiators and I kind of spoiled it already? But I picked up uh, Gladius for the PS2. And again, this is by LucasArts, so you know it's probably a pretty good game. Um, man, I don't know too much about this game. Other than, let's see, it says, Introducing an epic gladiatorial RPG. Follow the grand saga of two young heroes, Ursula and Valens, as they recruit and train a team of warriors and compete in the gladiator games. Battle with deadly weapons and powerful magic as you learn vital combat tactics while enhancing and customizing your characters. This has been on my radar for quite a bit. Glad I finally picked it up. Again, it was like at that retro video game store where I just lost my damn mind and started spending money on everything. Two games left for the PS2, all right? This is a launch game for the PS2. I had no idea. I never heard of this game until I picked it up. And uh, everyone's excited about Elden Ring coming out or the announcement of it. How about Eternal Ring for the PS2? The cover looks pretty cool, guys. But other than that, I don't know anything about this. Um, I don't know. Who said fantasies had to be final? Is that like a stab at Final Fantasy? Possibly. But for a PS2 launch game, uh, I think I could get some pretty good value out of this. My final game for the PS2, and I, I overpaid for this. I overpaid by about $15, and I feel really stupid doing it. Shame on me. This is what happens when I get in that mood that I just have to spend money. I bought Tales of Len Legendia. I'm saying it's wrong. Legendia. We'll try that. Okay. And I'm pretty sure it's the Tales, Tales of series. Uh, at least it's a complete in-box edition. Um, you know, it looks like a cool game. I love JRPGs, but... I paid too much money for it. I think it's valued at around $30, and I paid like $45. That's stupid of me. All right. Well, on a serious note, and this is very serious, um, Twitter generally is a cesspit of terrible people and opinions. And the only reason I am on Twitter is to connect with other people who love retro games. And 
because of that, it's fun to like discuss games with people, discuss opinions, see about their collections, and I really love hearing about the nostalgia that people have for their games. So sometimes I just, this is honest, I lose hope in humanity, not from Twitter, but from all the terrible stuff I see in the world. It's just every day is just bad news all over the place. I don't need to go into details. You guys know how terrible it is or how terrible it can be. But then again, every now and then somebody gives me faith in humanity. And I was so touched by this kind act. It was just like out of the blue. We were just kind of shooting the breeze. And this guy was like, hey, you know, I'd love to give you this game. You know, no strings attached. And um, I was really touched by it. It's extremely generous and nice of him. And that was Sega Blocks. So I know he said it, you know, he, this game is for free, but you know, anyone that's like watching this at this point, go follow him on Twitter and especially his YouTube channel. It's Sega Blocks. He's got some really cool content on there and he's one of the nicest human beings you guys can see or find. Um, so the game that he got me, or he gave to me, this is crazy. This is what's awesome. I don't even have a PS5, but when I get one, this is going to be the first game I play. Brand new, sealed, he gave me Demon Souls. How cool is that? I was really touched by that, um, that act of kindness, and... Uh, I have Demon Souls for the PS3. I really enjoyed the first couple levels of it, but I haven't played it probably since when it first came out. I don't know why I asked for it. Um, I'm pretty sure I got it for like Christmas or something like that. And I didn't realize how hard of a game it was. This was my first introduction to, you know, Demon Souls and Bloodborne and uh, Dark Souls, all those games. Those games are really hard. And I got that game before I got good at video games. And I'm so excited to play the reimagined, re remastered version for the PS5. Um, I'm, I'm so stoked. So a big thank you goes out to Sega Blocks. That was incredibly kind of you to send me this game. I'm so stoked. And it makes me want to get the PS5 even more now. So. Thank you for watching, guys, and thank you, Sega Blocks, for making the world a better place. I, I really mean it, buddy. And um, guys, go give him some go give him some support. In the meantime, I'm gonna resort these games. I've gotten way too many, and I got more on the way. Uh, hopefully, someday I can show you my game room. Um, as you can see, I got shelves all over the wall and uh, hopefully it turns into something special a few years from now but what's the best game that i picked up what's the worst which game do you think i should play you know kind of first and um like this video leave me a comment i'd love to hear your guys's input thanks for watching guys